Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. In today's video, we're going to look at the Turbo 360 BAM data queries feature. And we're going to look at it in a solution that combines API management and Azure functions. Now, in this video, um, how this is going to work is we've got Turbo 360 where we can have support users and business users want to have visibility of what's going on in, in our architecture, especially when um, things are happening in the background that they don't easily have visibility of. So the way this system works is we're going to have um, a third-party application submit bookings to our booking API, and then they get processed by Azure Functions, and the user is going to be able to see what's going on. So the way this is going to work is we've got API management here, functions here. They're both logging to App Insights. Behind the scenes that goes into log analytics and Turbo 360 can query both log analytics and app insights as data sources for these BAM queries. In this case, we're going to use app insights and let's take a look at how we can um, make this solution level up and get the users involved in what's going on. So over here in Turbo 360, I've got my tree view where I've created this um, group of processes that users can have access to. So in this case, we're in the sales department over here. We're looking at the reservation API. Now, that tree view allows me to give the users a technology agnostic view where they don't care whether it was built with functions, logic apps, data factory, or whatever. They just see the business processes. And we could look at these tabs across the top here to look at the different features we have available. Now. Down in the grid, you can see here I've got all of the bookings that have been getting processed. Each time a booking gets submitted, it'll appear in this grid and we'll be querying from the logs and we'll be able to see a few things. So we've got things like the timestamps, we've got the duration that they took over here, whether they were successful or not can be seen over on the corner here. Now, what I can do next is um, I can actually click on one of these transactions. So we take the top one here and I can make it open up and see the details of what's going on behind the scenes. So here I've got um, the three different stages that happen inside this transaction. So one of them is the API management back end where the API receives a request and forwards it onto the functions. And then I've got two steps that I'm reading from a function app. One of them is from the request log and one of them is from the trace log, but I'm able to stitch these different queries together to create this single view of the end-to-end -end process for the user. Now, what I can do with um, each of these stages is I can also click on them. I can open it up and I can see more detail about what was being logged here. So see there's quite a lot of detail here. I could have properties that are promote, um, I could have, you know, if, if in the case of functions, I might do my own log events that I might query out the trace log and I can put custom information in there, which could be really useful. So in the query for this log event, I can just filter the field. So maybe, I, you know, in this case, I might not want some of these fields to show up, so I can just ignore them from the query. And this makes it really easy for a user to start seeing, you know, if there was a problem, how far did it get through the process? And... With some of the logs, you might choose to um, add error messages to those logs about what was going on. Now, there's other features beyond this in Table 360. So the user can do searches here with the, the query window to look for certain um, bookings. So maybe they have a booking ID somebody raises a query for. They can go and search for that. They can also use a dashboard here. So we can create a simple dashboard to show them a single pane of how this performance. So for example, I might say, you know, in, in this case, I've seen how many bookings were successful and how many failed and what's the timeline of how many bookings we received each day. And you can create your own views that make it make it rich um, and deliver value for that for that user scenario. Um, we can also do monitoring over on the right here. So what I can do is I can configure a query down at the bottom here. So I've said if any, I'm using the, the save book and query, and if any of them are um, unsuccessful, we can raise an alert for that. So within a few minutes of a, of a 
transaction failing, we could do something like trigger an alert into service now to get somebody to go and check out what the problem is. We, in this case, I'm just using a Teams channel here for these alerts. Now, the question at this point becomes, how do we start creating this view for the users? Remember, these are end users. We need to be able to do a little bit of work to um, make this all happen. So what I can do in Turbo 360 here is I can go and model out this transaction. So we're trying to create a simplified view where the user doesn't need to be an expert in the Azure portal to understand what's going on. So I'll start off by creating a transaction over here, just with this little add button. And we'll have a look at the one I've already created. So I'll give it a name. I can optionally add a description. And then I would choose my data source. So in this case, I've chosen App Insights, and I've picked this App Insights instance down here in this drop-down list. You can see I could actually choose multiple different ones. And then I've put a query down here for my API. So if we have a look... Um, where this is really coming from is over in API management, I've got my booking API, which is the one that's highlighted. And you can see over in the middle here, I've got the App Insights integration connected up to push events out to App Insights. So I could do things like add headers. I can include message bodies if I want to. And what that means is this is the query that um, I'm running in Turbos 360 to get that parent view. So I'm just running a query against the request log and you can see down the bottom here the rows that would come back. In Turbo 360, once we execute this query to get the fields that are in it, so the first thing I would do is I'd choose which um, field do we want to use to correlate to other events. So in this case, I'm using the operation ID and that'll be able to be passed through to the, to the child stages to help look up the right values. I can also map through fields. So here I've got things like the, the timestamp for when it was completed, a duration field. I've got a map in as well. So I've said um, the success field, if it's false, it's a failure. If it's true, it's a success. That's how I map into the table 366 um, statuses. And then what we would do here is in the diagram, I can add stages. So I can add a new stage here. I can choose, now in this case, it could come from a different um, App Insights instance if I wanted, and I would choose the one and add a query. So if we if we have a look at these stages we've got here, so the first one's the API um, backend, and if we take a look, um, I'll just show you that query in App Insights. Um, so if we grab that out. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking for a back-end call in the dependency log, and I'm looking for it to match the operation ID. So you can see over the top here, I've got this special bit here where I'm passing in the operation ID that we promoted on the parent query to help look up the right log event. So you can see here the little prompt telling me that I've got a promoted operation ID available for, for looking up here. I can then do the same as before. I can do a mapping of the statuses for this, and that would give me my API event. I can do exactly the same thing with the function app one, so I can have a query here. And this actually, if you notice, this comes from a completely different App Insights workspace. So over here, this is the one that queries the request table. Again, we're using this operation ID, and I can just look up and match an event and then I can display that in Turbo 360. Again, we can do mappings of the of the um, statuses over here, and I can also indicate um, down at the bottom here, this executed app just puts an icon that you want to show to the user. And likewise, um, the third stage comes from the trace log, so if we put that in um, up in App Insights again, we can just see that. So I'm injecting the operation ID this time here, I'm querying the trace log, and I'm actually promoting out a status property. So in this one, I'm looking for um, the end of the function. But you could look here with them. Um, if you had your code doing custom log events, for example, you could look for those custom log events, and you could map them into the Turbo 360 um, diagram, and you could maybe promote any custom properties you have on your custom log event, which would be quite cool as well. Um, so hopefully that gives you a really simple walkthrough how easy it is to get up and running 
with Turbo 360 on top of the existing login that you already have in place for App Insights and uh, sorry, with App Insights for function apps and API management. But you can just take that login data and get so much more value out of it by being able to expose it to support users and business super users who really want to know what's happening behind the scenes. Thank you for listening to today's video.